Well, welcome again to a, another episode of Down to Earth, but Heavenly Minded. And I'm your host, Irv Risch. And let us now go live, or actually go on the air, not live. And there we are. Well, today our show is about Jesus. I think everybody in the world knows about Jesus. Uh, but how many really know Jesus? So I entitled this uh, episode, Knowing Jesus versus Knowing About Jesus. And what is the real difference? Well, uh, I like to use this website. Um, it's uh, uh, Got Questions. And uh, it's gotquestions.org. And I use it quite a bit. Uh, a lot of times I have questions about things in the Bible, and I usually go to it to uh, see what their answer is. And most of the time, they're right on. In fact, I haven't found yet where they weren't right on. Well, with that said, I'd like to uh, just maybe read this article, and uh, then I'm going to look at uh, 15 things uh, in the Bible about one thing about Jesus, about him being a bridegroom. There's so many things about Jesus that we can learn, uh, but that's just one aspect of it. So with that said, let us just read this article. You know, knowing Jesus and knowing about Jesus, two different things. Uh, we can learn a lot from a fan site and a magazine helps us to answer this question. Uh, adoring fans of movie, TV, music, and sports stars spend money and time obtaining information, photos, tidbits about their favorite stars. After uh, or, uh Pouring over such material, the fans feel like they really know their heroes. But do they? They may know certain th facts about their chosen heroes. They may be able to cite birthdays, favorite colors, childhood pets. But if they were to meet that person face to face, what would their hero say? Do their fans really know heroes? Well, we can kind of compare this with Jesus. Jesus responds to the question in Matthew 7, 23 and 20, uh, uh, chapter 7, verses 21 to 7, 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the ones who do the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name and drive out demons in your name, perform miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. There were people in Jesus' day that thought they were friends uh, of his because they knew the law, made strict rules for themselves and for others, and listened to his teaching and followed him, applauding the miracles. Uh, and like some of what he said, but Jesus called them evildoers and stated, I never knew you. Boy, those are hard words. Today, there are thousands who know about Jesus. That is, they know some facts about him. They might uh, commit some Bible verses to memory, and perhaps they even attend church but they have never allowed the facts to become their personal reality. They hold knowledge 
of their head with allows the truth to penetrate their hearts. Well, Jesus explains the problem. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain and teaching and merely human rules. Matthew 15, verses 8 and 9, and Mark 7, verse 6. They can be easily substituted religion for real relationship with Jesus. I know I did it for years. We often think that if we are doing Christian things, that all that's all that counts. We can appreciate the fact of Jesus' death and resurrection. But until we have made him our Lord, the facts uh, do us no good. John 3, 16 to 18, Acts 10, 43, Romans 10, 9. There is a difference between uh, intelligently assessing to the saving faith. Knowing Jesus means we have accepted his sacrifice on our behalf. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. We ask him to be the Lord of our lives, John 1, 12, and Acts 2, 21. We identify with him in his death and consider our old uh, selves. We have died with him, Colossians 3, 3, Romans 6, 2, and 5, Galatians 6, 14 and 2.20. We accept the forgiveness and the cleansing from sin and seek to know him in an intimate fellowship through his Holy Spirit, John 17.3, Philippians 3.10, and 1 John 2.27. When we repeat, uh, when we repent of our sins, and surrender our lives to him, Jesus gives us the Holy Spirit. Acts uh, 2.38 and John 14.26 and 16.13. The Holy Spirit comes to live inside us, in our hearts, in the core of who we really are, changing us forever. In Corinthians 6.19 and 1 John Three, nine. The facts that we know uh, about Jesus comes alive as we get to know him personally. Let's say you're reading, you read that your favorite movie star has green eyes and a dimple on her chin. Those traits are merely facts on paper until you meet her face to face. Then suddenly those green eyes are looking at you and the dimples uh, spring to her uh, chin while smiling. She tells you about her days, her fear, and her inner thoughts. You might recall that you had heard these facts before, but now, you're experiencing them. You know about her before, but now you know her. Uh, the abstract has become uh, concrete. Things you thought you knew start to make sense as you enter into a relationship. Well, Jesus is a person. To know him is to enter into a relationship. The greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Matthew 22, 37, Mark 12, uh, 30, and Luke 10, 27. It's hard to love someone you don't know. Loving him starts with surrendering to his plan for your life. That's what it means to make him Lord, 
Matthew 6, 33, Romans 10, 9 and 10, Psalms uh, 16, 8. The nature of God is so vast and complex that no human being can fully know everything there is to know about him. But life is about uh, continually seeking him, learning more about him, and enjoying his fellowship. Jeremiah 29, 13, and Philippians 3, 8. Well, I put something together here. Let me see if I can find it here. Uh, yeah, this is it here. Uh, I actually got this off of uh, a site. My source was Bible uh, Knowledge, Jesus.com. And the topic was Jesus as a bridegroom. And all these verses are put together. And there's 15 verses. Let's, uh, let's just read them. Actually, what I'll do is I'll let the computer read them. But let's just go through them. Okay, let's start it. 15 Bible verses about Jesus as a bridegroom. 1. John 3 verse 29. He who has the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom, who stands and hears him, rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. So this joy of mine has been made full. 2. Matthew 9 verse 15. And Jesus said to them, The attendants of the bridegroom cannot mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them, can they? But the days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. 3. Mark 2 verse 19. And Jesus said to them, While the bridegroom is with them, the attendants of the bridegroom cannot fast, can they? So long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. 4. Luke 5 verse 34. And Jesus said to them, You cannot make the attendants of the bridegroom fast while the bridegroom is with them, can you? 5. Revelation 22 verse 17. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. And let the one who hears say, Come. And let the one who is thirsty come, let the one who wishes take the water of life without cost. 6. 2 Corinthians 11 verse 2 For I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy, for I betrothed you to one husband, so that to Christ I might present you as a pure virgin. 7. Luke 5 verse 35 But the days will come, and when the bridegroom is taken away from them, then they will fast in those days. 8. John 2 verse 9 When the head waiter tasted the water which had become wine, and did not know where it came from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew, the head waiter called the bridegroom. 9. Revelation 19 verse 7 Let us rejoice and be glad and give the glory to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. 10. Mark 2 verse 18. John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting, and they came and said to him, Why do John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? 11. Ephesians 5 verses 25 to 27. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her, so that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in all her glory, having no spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she would be holy and blameless. 12. Matthew 9 verses 14 to 15. Then the disciples of John came to him, asking, Why do we and the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, The attendants of the bridegroom cannot mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them, can they? But the days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. 13. Mark 2 verses 18 to 20 John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting, and they came and said to him, Why do John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, While the bridegroom is with them, the attendants of the bridegroom cannot fast, can they? So long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast in that day. 14. Luke 5 verses 33-35
And they said to him, The disciples of John often fast and offer prayers, the disciples of the Pharisees also do the same, but yours eat and drink. And Jesus said to them, You cannot make the attendants of the bridegroom fast while the bridegroom is with them, can you? But the days will come, and when the bridegroom is taken away from them, then they will fast in those days. 15, Revelation 21 verse 2 And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, made ready as a bride adorned for her husband. Source, BibleKnowingJesus.com, Topics, Jesus as a Bridegroom Well, you might be thinking, why did I pick the subject of the bridegroom to talk about Jesus? Well, in the Bible, it does refer to him as uh, the bridegroom. And the bride is the church. And we who make up the church are his bride. When you think about a wedding, how the the groom waits for the father of the bride to bring the bride down the uh, aisle, and he waits to be uh, wed with her. The anticipation, that's how we should feel in our hearts when we think about the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I look for that day when we have the great wedding uh, supper in heaven and the bridegroom and the bride are united for all eternity. And that's going to happen. So knowing Jesus versus knowing about Jesus, now you know the difference. Are you one who knows, just know Jesus, or do you know just about Jesus? Well, I hope you're one that really knows Jesus and you're anticipating his return. Well, with that said, I'm going to end my podcast again. God is out here, and you can find out all about him in your Bible. And we just looked at 15 verses about him being a bridegroom. Well, till next time, this is your host, Ur Rish. Bye for now.